Thank you for joining yoga with us this morning. And thank you to AARP Arizona for sponsoring this class so that we can have free yoga from the comfort of our own homes. If you don't already have your yoga props, grab two blocks, two blankets, a strap, and your yoga mat. And then go ahead and hit play on your playlist that I sent out, or you can play any playlist of your choice. Take a few deep breaths when you get all of your props settled in. And then the first pose we're gonna start in today is a heart opener. So for those of you who haven't been to my class before, my name is Lisa. I own Do Yoga with Lisa. Um, and I try to offer a few different options as we move through class, just so you can kind of find what fits your body, your practice today. So I'm all about modifying as you go. If something doesn't feel good, please always feel free to take something else. Really listen to your body and know that everything I give is completely a suggestion. So two options here. You can either take blankets and fold up one or two. This is a more gentle option, coming with one blanket, lying back over the blanket behind the back of your heart, arms out to a T, palms up, and then legs extended long. If you want to go a little bit deeper into this back bend behind the heart, you can stack another blanket. Or you can also take an option with blocks. One block on the lowest setting under the head, and then one block under the lowest setting in between the shoulder blades. You can even turn these up to the medium setting if that feels comfortable for you. And then here we would also extend the arms out to a T, palms up. So find which one feels comfortable for your body today. Heart open, shoulders rolled back. Space between the collarbones. And then take a deep breath into your belly, ribs, and heart. Exhale, let the back of your body melt into the earth, into the blankets or the blocks behind you. Take a moment to hit the mental pause button on anything you had going on before class today. Anything coming after. And for today's class, I found a quote that says, find the balance between being productive and being patient. I think around this time of the year, we have a lot going on with the holidays trying to get so much done so quickly and adding more onto our plates. Often around this time of year, we start setting resolutions for the next year before this year's even passed. In today's practice, I invite you to find a balance between pushing those edges, going a little further, and the balance of being patient and knowing when to maybe pull back a little bit. 
finding a balance between effort, strength, and bringing in also some ease and some stretching. Take a moment to reflect on what, which one you might need a little bit more of in your practice today. Do you need a little bit more of that productive, quote unquote, that strength, a little bit more cardio? Or do you need a little bit more of that patience, that slowness, that restful practice? Take one more deep breath in this heart opener here. Audible exhale. If you need a few extra moments to rest in this position, take your time. When you're ready, start to roll off to one side. And then we'll make our way to a comfortable seat. If you tend to round into the low back, a nice little trick is to take a little height underneath your seat using a little blanket. Move the flesh away from the sit bones. So you sit right up on the sit bones and rise up tall through the crown. Inhale, roll the shoulders up to the ears and down the back a few times. And then finding stillness through the shoulders, start to circle through the ribs. You'll inhale, come forward, heart reaches out. Exhale, tuck the chin and round. Eyes can float closed or soft gaze. And then reverse directions on your next exhale. And then come back to center. Drop chin to chest and let the head sway from side to side. And then resting your left ear towards your left shoulder. Let the head get heavy and stretch the right side of your neck. From here, you can make a soft fist with the right hand. Bring your fist and just start to come behind the ear, massaging gently with the knuckles. And then you can either go down the back of the neck or start to wrap around coming towards the collarbone. And again, finding that balance of effort and ease here. Massaging enough to where we can maybe start to help relax the muscles, but not so much that we're causing any pain or added tension. Relax the right hand down to the lap. Start to rock back and forth side to side. And this time, right ear comes to right shoulder. Drop the shoulders down away from the ears. And then gentle fist with the left hand. Same little massage technique coming behind the ear. And then you can either go a little bit more down the back of the neck or wrapping around towards the collar. Just massaging out any tension, maybe from sleeping, maybe working at a desk. A few more circles once you're done with your massage. And then we'll come back to center. Roll the shoulders up to the ears and down the back. Take a big inhale, circle, sweep the arms up. Exhale, left arm comes down, right hand up and over, roll your right shoulder back, reach long through the right side body. 
Inhale, arms up overhead. Exhale, right hand down, left hand reaches up. Really root down through that left sit bone. And then reach up and over to the right. Roll the shoulder back, gaze under the left arm. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, twist to the left. Right arm in front, left behind. Or you can take the right arm outside of the left knee. Inhale for length through the spine. Exhale, twist belly, ribs, chest, and then gaze, gazing over your left shoulder. Inhale, sweep back to center, arms up overhead. Exhale, go to the right. Left hand in front or outside of the right leg. Inhale, sit up nice and tall. Exhale, twisting belly, ribs, chest, and gaze. Drop the right shoulder away from the ear. And then inhale back to center, arms overhead. Exhale, hands come down to the earth, coming into a tabletop position. If you're like me and you're on some hard tile or hard floors, it can be nice to bring a blanket under the knees for a little added support to protect the knees. And then come into a tabletop, wrist under shoulders, knees under hips, long spine, reach out through the crown, reach out through your tail. And just take a moment here and push the earth away with your hands. Tuck your toes, sit back onto the heels if it's comfortable. If it's not comfortable to keep the toes tucked, you can untuck and sit back just for one moment of breath. This is called screaming toe if you tuck the toes. So it can really open the arches of the feet, but sometimes it can be a little, a little loud. <laughs> Come back onto your hands, tap up the feet, and then tabletop position, beginning some cat cows. Inhale, tailbone rises, heart opens forward. Exhale, tuck the tail round through the mid back, tuck the chin. Inhale, stretch the front of the body. Exhale, stretch the back of the body. You can keep going a few more rounds the same way. If you want to add on a little bit, as you exhale, start to shift the weight back towards the heels. Sometimes they even like to get a little sway. And then inhale, come back through for cow pose. Exhale, hips back towards the heels. You stretch a little deeper. Make your way back to a tabletop position. Knees go towards the outer edges of the mat. Hands go one hand print forward. And then start to circle through the hips. Inhale, circle forward. And exhale, circle back. Ooh, it might be a little noisy. I feel like I always hear my inner thighs. I always hear a little bit. So just move slow, continue to breathe. Inhale as you go forward and exhale back. We're going to reverse directions on our next exhale. And then come back to a tabletop position. Tuck the toes, hips up and back, downward dog. Pointer fingers are going forward. Really push through the L of your hand. So your pointer finger and your thumb. Push the hips up and back. And start to pedal out your feet. And once you're ready to find some stillness, I recommend bending deep into the knees, lifting the hips up and back, gaze towards the thighs or the belly button. And instead of thinking the heels reaching completely to the ground, I want you to think more long spine and really lifting up and back, less about stretching the backs of the legs. Inhale, look up between the hands, deep bend into the knees. 
Exhale, step or hop to the front of the mat, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, deep bend, forward fold. From here, you can stay hands on the ground or you can grab opposite elbows, create a little space between the feet so you can sway a little bit side to side. A little bit of prop cleanup, I'll just slide off my blanket, my strap to the other side. Make sure I have my blocks up at the front of my mat. Releasing the elbows if we're holding on. Inhale, half lift. Reach the crown out. Exhale, deep bend. Plant the hands, send the left leg back, runner's lunge. Here you can bring hands to blocks or hands to the earth. Think of that back heel pushing out and your crown pushing forward. So like one long line from the back leg, up the spine, and then through the crown. Exhale, drop that back knee down. Inhale, hands come to the tops of the thigh. Take a moment and imagine your pubis lifting up, tail going down. So not tucking, but just think long, long tail. And then imagine the right heel pulling back and the left knee dragging forward. And just see if that changes anything in the stretch. From here, you can stay with the hands on the thigh for a little more stability, or reach the arms overhead, relax the shoulders down away from the ears. Deep breath in, full breath out. From here, take your arms to a cactus, squeeze between the shoulder blades, Inhale, reach up. Exhale, breathe out. Cactus, squeeze between the shoulder blades. So if you imagine my hands right between the shoulder blades, you squeeze. And this is really good for helping to unround the shoulders if you work at an office or a desk. And then from here, reach back up. Right forearm to right thigh or you can bring a hand to the block, out to the right side. Left arm up and over, roll the shoulder back. Keep thinking long, long tail. Inhale, both arms back up. Exhale, hands come to the blocks. And then start to straighten through the front leg. Feel that right hip pulling back, half split. Flexing the foot so the toes are coming more back towards you. A lot of the times I see people locking out this leg, little tiny micro bend or as much bend as you need here. And then imagine that right hip crease pulling back. Take a deep breath in, slow breath out. And then a little bit of rocking back and forth. You can keep this rocking going straight forward and straight back. Or if you wanna switch it up a little, take the blocks inside of the right foot, turn the toes out a little bit, and then it'll be a little bit more diagonal. A few more rocks. If the foot's over to the right, heel toe it back to center. Take the blocks off to the side, hands frame the foot. Step onto the ball of the back foot, runner's lunge. Right leg steps back, plank pose. From here, if you want to add more strength, you can add on push-ups. Elbows come back. If you're like me and you're like, no, thank you, <laughs> drop your knees, chest and chin. And then we're all eventually gonna meet down here anyways. From here, you can either do baby cobra, elbows come together, just coming up a little bit off the mat. You can take your hands down into the earth, 
press and make the arms straight for full cobra. Or you can bring the hands a little closer to the body, push into the tops of the feet and lift the thighs off the earth. For me, when I lift the thighs off the earth, it hurts my low back. So I'm usually somewhere more around here. Tuck the toes, hips up and back, downward dog. We're gonna hold down dog for a little bit. So if down dog is not feeling great for you today, you can always come down to child's pose. Take a breath. I always say, you know, a yoga teacher in a yoga class because I spend like half the class in child's pose. But final balance you need. If you need those push ups, add them. If you need child's pose, it's here for you. Come back up to your tabletop position when you're ready. Those in down dog can stay in down dog. We'll start to meet them there. And then lift the left leg high to the sky and step it through, coming left foot forward. And then back foot comes to meet it forward, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, deep bend. From here, step the right leg back. Runner's lunge, hands can come to those blocks or to the earth. And then drop the back knee down, hands come to the tops of the thigh, and then your choice to leave them here or arms can go overhead. Take a moment, think pubis up, tail down, front heel pulling back, back knee dragging forward. You can keep your arms lifted and just focus on relaxing the shoulders down away from the ears, breathing to wherever you feel the stretch. If you want to add on that strength, start to take the cactus arms, squeezing between the shoulder blades. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, strength. And last one. Reach back up through the fingertips, left forearm to left thigh, or we can bring a block out to the left side. I feel like this is a little more sturdy for me. Right arm up and over, roll the shoulder back, gaze underneath the right arm. Inhale, arms back overhead. And then exhale, Come hands down to the blocks, shift your hips back, half split. Imagine that hip crease pulling back. Again, we don't want to hyperextend. We don't want to overstretch the back of the knee. So still adding a little micro bend. And then I like blocks at the highest setting, but just find wherever you can find a flat low back. So we don't want the candy cane back. We want to have a nice flat back. So come up as high as you need to be there. Take a deep breath in. And then when you're ready, you can start to add in a little rocking back and forth. You can also take the blocks inside of the foot, heel toe that left foot out. Take the toes to point a little bit more towards the corner of the mat, and then start to bend and straighten through that front leg. And then come back into your lunge, heel toe the foot back to center. Tuck the back toes, hands come down to the earth. Step it back, plank pose. Here's where we have a chance to customize it. What do we need? Do we want to add on a few of those yogi push-ups, elbows going back? Do we want to come knees, chest, chin? Find your way down to the bottom of the mat eventually, and then we'll take the back bend of our choice. Baby cobra, full cobra, 
or if you want, pushing into the tops of the feet and coming into up dog. Tuck the toes, hips up and back, downward dog, or child's pose. Wherever you are, take a few deep breaths in. Balance between being productive and being patient. See if your mind's already trying to go forward to the next thing. Try to be fully in this down dog pose. Hips up and back, pulling up towards where the ceiling and the wall meet. Heels nice and heavy. If you're in child's pose, make your way back up to tabletop and meet us in down dog. Right leg lifts towards the sky and then bending into the knee. However many steps you need to get here, you can help your leg get there as well. Come back to your runner's lunge. Step your back foot forward, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, deep bend. Take a moment to shake out the hips, rest the neck. From here, coming back to your forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant the hands. Send the left leg back, runner's lunge. From here, turn that back heel down. And then we're gonna windmill up warrior two. Deep bend into this front knee, but don't let the knee go past the ankle. Look and see, often I see uh, myself included, knees falling in towards the big toe. Try to push it a little bit more out towards the pinky toe. Arms to a T and then gaze over your front middle finger. Reach out opposite directions through the fingertips. And then reaching forward through the right hand, exhale, lower right forearm to right thigh. Lots of options here. You can take a hand down to the block or you can take a hand down to the earth. Find where you feel comfortable. Usually I like to stay forearm to thigh. You can stay left arm reaching up and over. If you wanna add on a little bit more of that back strengthening, that heart opening, you can reach your arm overhead and then W, cactus on the left arm. Pull that elbow back, squeeze between the shoulder blade, look up and then reach overhead. Cactus back and then reach and extend. And one more and then reach back overhead. From here, ground, but down through the right big toe. And then you're gonna windmill up warrior two, flip your front palm, and then bring the right fingertips up to the sky, left hand down the back leg. Don't lose that bend on the front knee. Really stretch through the right side body. And then inhale up, windmill the hands down to frame the foot. Step it back, plank pose. Exhale, add on push-ups or come down to bottom of a push-up. Inhale, up dog or cobra. And we'll eventually all meet in down dog or take a breath in child's pose. If you're like me, you might need to turn the fan on if you're feeling a little hot. Grab a sip of water or whatever you need. If we're in child's pose, we make our way back up to our down dog. Inhale, left leg high to the sky, point through the toe, and then exhale, step it through. Back foot steps forward, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, exhale, deep bend. This time, step the right leg back. Go ahead and put that right heel down. And you almost think that this front heel is sort of lining up with the arch of the back foot. Doesn't have to be exact, but 
um, that can kind of help people first find a stance that feels feels good for them for warrior two. Ground down through this front big toe mound. And then windmill the hands up, warrior two. Take a moment to adjust anything. Start from the bottom and work your way up. Do we need to shorten or lengthen the stance? Bend into the knee. Check in. Make sure our knee isn't collapsing in towards that big toe. Push it a little bit out towards the pinky toe. Keep both quads nice and engaged. Don't let one of them have to do all of the work. Reach our arms out to a T. Drop the shoulders from the ears. Reach the fingertips opposite directions. Full breath in. Full breath out. Next, inhale, reach yourself forward. Exhale, left forearm to left thigh. Right hand reaches up to the sky. Still thinking one long line of energy. So this back heel's grounded down, up the leg. And so then we can start to reach overhead. Keep that long line extending. Your choice if you want to add on those cactus, adding on three, two, and one. Reach back overhead. Really start to imagine our core engaging, closing the bottom of the ribs. Deep inhale and start to come back up, flip the palm. Fingertips go up to the sky. So left fingertips reach up to the sky, right hand reaches down the back leg. Try not to lose that bend on the left knee. Coming back up, windmill the hands down, frame the foot. Step it back, plank pose. Yogi's choice, do what feels good for you. Add on those push-ups, modify your back bend. Go where your body needs to go. And after a few breaths, We'll eventually all meet back in that down dog. Right leg lifts to the sky. Exhale, step it through. Again, you can use any bit of assistance you need here. You might need to help the leg come all the way up. And then back leg steps forward or we can use a few touches here. Inhale, half lift, exhale, deep bend. Start to ground down through your feet and roll up one vertebrae at a time. Shoulders up to the ears and down the back. Fingertips reaching down. Let the eyes float close here. You can keep the fingertips reaching down or let one hand rest on your heart and one on your belly. Check in with your breath. Take one large step back from here with whatever foot's going to have you facing me. So just face the long edge of your mat, whichever edge works for you. Point your toes towards the corners of the mat, heels in, toes out, and bend into the knees and just bend and straighten and just see, are my knees and toes going the same direction? From here, bend, and then we'll reach our arms wide, cross right arm over left, either give yourself a big hug, Back to the hands come together, or you can come palm to palm. Pull the elbows down and away. You can stay still. This is already a lot, stretching through the back, bending into the knees, doing a lot with the hips. Or you can start to move around. My teacher calls this seaweed asana. It's a made up pose. But just imagine you're like a piece of seaweed. And as you flow around, try to stretch through the side body, the back body. Flow it up and down. 
And then come back to center. Uncross the arms, reach wide. And then left over right or opposite of whatever you have. You can give yourself a hug. Backs of the hands together or palms to palms. Imagine pulling the elbows down and away. Make the back of your heart as big as you can. And then start to flow it out. Let your knees decide how deeply bend your hips. Don't start to bend deeper than it feels good to. Find what feels good for you. And a few more waves. And then coming back to center, release the arms. Inhale, straight arms, straight legs. Cross behind the back and press. Bend into the knees and really press your hands out like you're pushing two walls away. Inhale, scoop up from the ground, straighten the legs, straighten the arms. Exhale, bend the knees and ground this back down towards your core. I'm gonna repeat that. Inhale, straight arms, straight legs. Exhale, behind the back. Press the hands out, bend into the knees. Inhale, scoop up towards the sky. Exhale, ground it down. Inhale, lift. Cross behind the back and press. Inhale, scoop. Exhale, lower. One more time. You can do eyes closed or soft gaze. Great job. Inhale, straight legs. Turn the outer edges of the feet to run parallel. This is where I really like to have blocks too out in front or just, I like to even have them in my hands and as I hold. So imagine you have a wall here on each side of the feet and we're pushing into that wall, really grounding down to this outer edge of the foot. Start to hinge at the hip and then fold hands underneath the shoulders reach your spine spine nice and long so a lot of the times what i see is people hanging back in their heels try to come a little more even so that ankle knee hip are a little more in line and then from here you can again bend the knees soften so we're not hyper extending all the way out imagine pushing into these outer edges of the feet you can stay hands where they're at or walk the hands forward Letting the head become heavy. Lots of places to pause. Lots of choices to find what works for you. And you can bend into these two as much as you need. From here, take a few more deep breaths. When you're ready to exit, we'll bend a little bit into the knees, hands come to the hips, and pulling the torso all the way back up, stepping towards the front of our mat. Ground down through the left foot first, pushing down through all four corners of the foot. If you have a wall nearby, it can be nice to take a hand to the wall for a little more balance. If like me, yoga teachers don't have good balance automatically. <laughs> it helps me a lot to focus on something that's not moving in front of me. So don't look at me on the screen because I might fall. Look at something out in your space that is going to be really nice and still. Start to bend into the right knee, taking your hand towards the right ankle. And then just push the heel towards the glute. Imagine that knee is reaching towards the ground. And then you can keep the hand on the wall for balance or you can extend the arm up. Think that long tail. Beautiful job. Release the heel down. Turn the right heel out, to, or turn the right toes out to the right side. The heel coming up towards the left ankle, hands at heart center. You can stay here or lift that heel a little higher 
letting the ball of the foot, the toes rest on the earth. A little higher coming to the calf. Or if you'd like, you can take the foot all the way up to the inner thigh. The area we wanna skip over is the knee. We don't wanna push that knee out to the side. So unless we can bring it all the way up here, we'll keep it on the calf just so we avoid pushing into the knee. From here, notice if this left hip is starting to push out. Push those muscles on that outer hip in towards the bone. It might mess with the balance a little bit. You might fall out, but that's okay. Come back to the pose. Hands can stay at heart center for more balance or you can start to grow the branches out, reaching the arms wide, doing whatever you like with the hands. And it's okay to wobble and strengthen your roots. If the branches are growing out, bring them back towards heart center. Take a deep breath in. Full breath out. And then relax that right foot back down. Sometimes I like to take the top of my left foot to the mat and give it a little stretch. And take the same pose on the other side. And it can completely be different from side to side. So grounding down through this right foot now, you might pick a same point. You might notice a little bit of a different point to focus on while you practice. You can start to bend into the left leg. Again, you can use the wall for a little bit of a support. And then kicking that left heel towards the glute, reach your hand towards the ankle. And then imagine left knee reaching down towards the ground, crown rising up. We don't want to flare the ribs here. Here we're really focusing on long spine. And then releasing that leg down, turn the foot out, toes point towards the left. And then you can keep the foot on the ground, ankle or heel to the ankle, sole of the foot to the calf, or coming all the way up to the inner thigh. Often when we do this, it starts to push that hip out even more. So imagine the right hip pushing in towards the thigh. So muscles towards thigh bone to create more length, hands at heart center, or starting to grow branches out. And balance takes time to grow. I know the more I practice these poses, the more I find balance and I can find new edges to play with. If you want to try something new, maybe closing the eyes and seeing what that does for the pose. <laughs> And then grounding down back to center, slowly put the foot back down. And then you can stretch out the feet, stretch out the legs. Inhale, circle sweep the arms up to the sky. Exhale, fold forward. Plant the hands, step our hop back plank pose. Exhale, lower yourself all the way down. Forearms to the earth, sphinx pose, shoulders and elbows in line, pull the heart through, tops of the feet pressing into the earth. And then slowly relaxing down, hands underneath the shoulders, push your hips back towards your heels, child's pose. Knees close together will stretch a little bit more through the low back. Knees further apart will stretch a little bit deeper into the hips. 
So your practice, your choice, which one do you need a little bit more of today? A little more hip stretch, a little bit more low back stretch. And then we'll inhale, roll up one vertebrae at a time. Swing the legs out in front of you. Move the flesh away from the sit bones. Sitting up nice and tall. Flexing the feet. For me, this is one where I often lock out my legs. So a nice little trick is to take a rolled blanket underneath to make sure you don't lock out. Hands press into the earth. If you know you start to round your low back as you fold forward, this is also a good place to take a little height under the seat with another blanket. Press into the earth, rising up through the crown. Chin push back into the drawer, back of the neck long. Start to walk the fingertips forward. Relax the shoulders down away from the ears. Push out through your heels, toes reaching back towards you. Hinging at the hip here, so flat, low back. And once we find we can't fold anymore without starting to round that low back, then that's where we practice that little bit of patience. Not always trying to force ourselves to do more, fold further, but can we just pause right there, breathe, and just sit with that edge instead of pushing back. And come out of the pose about 10%, reach the spine long, and then exhale, fold back forward. Relax through neck and shoulders. And then walk yourself back up. From here, slide the blanket out from underneath. Soles of the feet come together for butterfly pose. And feet as close or as far away from the body as it feels comfortable for the knees. Another little trick you can do is take blankets underneath the knees, blocks underneath the knees. I like to also kind of roll the blanket up and just kind of create a little cushion around the ankles. And that helps to hold the knees a little higher so it's not falling out as far. You can either hold onto the shins if your blankets aren't hiding your toes. You can take your peace fingers and use the big toes as a little toe strap. Roll the shoulders up to the ears and down the back. Reach your heart forward. And then start to lean forward almost as if, you know, if you had riding like mine on my shirt, you're trying to let me see the riding for most of the way down. And then when you're ready, you can start to reach your hands out in front of you, almost like down dog arms and relax the head. If you have blocks, you can also build up a little support for your head and really let this become an even more restful pose using blankets and props to support you up. Keep pressing the soles of the feet into one another. If the hands are walked forward, start to walk them back towards the body. Bring the knees back up and then just take a moment, sit back, rock the knees from side to side, almost like little windshield wipers. And then hug the knees towards the heart. We're going to roll all the way down onto our backs. It's good to have your blankets and your box nearby.
Hug the knees in towards the chest, rocking side to side or circles. And then bring the feet close to the seat, but not touching. We'll press down and forward through the heels to lift the hips. So imagine the hip points rising up to the sky and then slide a block underneath the hips. So you're gonna place it underneath the sacrum, either on the lowest or the medium setting. So avoiding that high setting, but finding which setting feels good, medium or low. If you don't have blocks, you can use blankets, you can use pillows, whatever you have. Not letting the knees fall out to the sides or collapse in, just staying in line, knees and toes. Hands come beside you, palms up, or some, for some people it can feel better, palms down for the shoulders. Relaxing the low back, back of the neck long. Lift the hips up towards the sky, slide that block down and away from the body. Lower the hips back down. You can hug the knees in towards the chest and maybe even drop them a little side to side to get a little twist through the low back. At this point in the practice, I like to invite people to take any pose they need to make their practice feel more complete. So if you wanna lay on your back and do a little more twisting for the low back, if you wanna use the straps and reach your legs up to the sky and get a little extra hamstring stretch. Another popular one at the end of class is kind of coming into this happy baby, grabbing onto your big toes and bending into the knees or the outer edges of the feet, you can grab onto as well. No wrong answers here. Some of us like to also just spend this time getting more prepped for our final pose. So you can take just traditional Shavasana that's at the end of class where they just lay down and relax and let their eyes close and really work on that rest side of the practice. Um, one of my favorites is that heart opener we showed at the beginning of class with the blankets. That can also be a nice one at the end of class. You can also take the blankets and stack them up down the length of the spine to create a little bit of a different heart opener. So just find something that's comfortable for you. You don't have to do any heart openers. You can just start to cover up, lay down and let the eyes float closed. So starting to finish up whatever poses you were taking finding whatever Shavasana works for you today. Knowing that there's nothing left to do. There's nothing you need to hold or do for this part of practice. It's all about being resting, letting all that hard work you did start to integrate. Start to let the eyes become heavy in their sockets. The back of the head heavy on the earth or your blankets. Relaxing all expression of the face. The tongue and the throat. Heart open. Back body resting.
with each exhale, feeling your hands and feet starting to sink deeper into the earth. As you rest here, if at any point your mind starts to wander, bring yourself back to sensation, the feeling of the earth below you, the sound of your breath, your pets, Keep being patient with yourself and bringing yourself back to the present moment. If you're not in a rush after class, I invite you to rest here as long as you like. If you're ending class together, go ahead and start to wiggle fingers and toes. Stretching the arms overhead like that first stretch when you wake up in the morning. Rolling over to one side, coming into fetal position, head resting on your arm or using a blanket as a pillow. Take a moment of gratitude for yourself for showing up to your practice today, for taking this time for your body and mind, taking this time for yourself. Take another deep breath, and after your exhale, start to push yourself up using the strength of your arms, coming to a comfortable seat, hands at heart center. Find the balance between being productive and being patient. Sometimes the most productive thing we can do is to take rest, to hit pause, to take a moment for ourselves. 
May we remember this on and off the mat, especially with the holidays coming up. Often these are the times we start to skip Shavasana or skip our practice. Now is the time to add in some extra self-care. You can't pour from an empty cup. May we be productive and patient, both on and off the mat. Namaste. Wishing you guys all great holidays. And thank you again for taking this time for yourself. Um, these recordings will be available. So if you do want to watch it again, those will be up on the Fit Phoenix site. Um, if you do have any um, special requests, definitely let me know. December is the last one for the year. So um, that'll be the second Saturday of December. So I'd love if there's any special requests, you guys need something specific before um, the holidays and the new year, please don't hesitate to let me know. Thank you so much. Thank you, Don. Um, and I'm going to stop this recording real quick.